So as usual, I was scrolling Twitter and I saw this tweet. Monica tweeted, so apparently there's plagiarism in side order that really sucks to see, link below. Also, Monica is a VTuber you guys should definitely check out. And there was actually a video about this that we are going to check out now because I want to see what the situation's about. So just to shout out the YouTuber that did this, this was TJams3, did Splatoon 3 plagiarize Nano Ray's music. So we're going to get into that right now. Okay, so I just wanted to make a quick video talking about this situation. I've seen some people talking about it. I've browsed the comments. A lot of people have a lot of strong opinions about this Splatoon 3 plagiarism so this is like something that people have been talking about situation and um some misconceptions about the extent of it the terms around music copyright um how does sampling you know relate to the situation and so i just wanted to talk a little bit about what i think people are having some misconceptions about so people and, think that it's sampled um, just offer my opinion um especially as someone who is a, a fan of nintendo and splatoon and these types of soundtracks um i just want to offer my opinion on why i do think it is plagiarism um at least in a small section um and then kind of talk about the big that's a big statement to have i, I mean i know people have brought up things in the past about like nintendo in general but it, it to call out nintendo about plagiarism especially for their newest like game is kind of crazy to start off with picture and what might happen um since this is kind of unprecedented i haven't really seen any um anything this blatant in a game this big so really? it's going to be kind of interesting uh, to see if Nintendo even responds or does anything. So some background, um, the original track that people are comparing is called Mimic Lock, and it's by a, an artist called Nano Ray, who it produces um, a lot of tracks of this style. It's kind of like trance. It's like a fusion of like trance music, um, EDM. People notice that a specific section of the song called Mimic Clock um, lines up very well with a track from Splatoon 3 that just came out called Echo Onslaught. So I want to show a couple of these similarities. Oh. And um, first, some people noticed in the intro to Echo Onslaught, there is a very similar part to one of Nano Ray's tracks. So I'm going to play um, the Echo Onslaught version first, and then um, I'll play the other one right after. I like the song also. It's close. Definitely you could say that it's a little bit different though. So I wouldn't really consider that the most egregious. Yeah, it's offense, not that crazy. Although the similarity is pretty uncanny there. Yeah. Um, it, there's a little bit of difference. I just wanted to, to show that before I get into the real meat of it. So the other track called Mimic Clock um, contains this section, which I'll play right here. Mimic Clock even sounds like a Splatoon song in the first place. Oh. After playing Sidor for so long, Yeah. I, I heard it in the first part of the song and I was like, yeah, I, I can, I can 1,010% hear it. There's little things that are added in there that it feels like it's a little bit more, but yeah. Hey, in the music industry, people get away with even less trust. Like if you, you can go look up what happened. So this would be very interesting to see if it actually leads to something because there have been even just small sections that people have wanted to be credited for. And it, it's happened in the music industry. So I'm wondering if that applies here. You know, you'll immediately notice there's a lot similar there. Um, different key, but a lot of the rhythm and the there's similarities, solo part, yeah. the synth solo, uh, it sounds very similar. A little bit, a little bit interesting. So what I've done uh, is I have taken the, uh, I've taken the tracks, I've taken the Splatoon track, and um, I adjusted the tempo and the pitch um, to line up with Mimic Lock, which is in a different key. So right now they are actually in the same key. It's going to sound a little bit strange since it's been uh you know stretched and whatnot but uh yeah just take a listen yeah you can hear it you can hear the little platoon sounds that they added 
Oh, that's you know, bad. It becomes a little bit more obvious, but I also transcribed the solo part. So yeah, let's let's hear this. I don't even think they would even need all of this. Like, me, like just go look up the music industry. And the only reason I, because I pay attention to little things like this, people will ask for credit for very like small things that people would even pay attention to. So this is kind of crazy. <laughs> That's kind of crazy. So at wow. this point, you know, I think it's pretty much proven. I mean, a lot of people have said, you know, it's just inspiration. Uh, this is not just inspiration. That's not just inspiration, this no. This Splatoon track was clearly built off the blueprint of the original, whether that- And not even like when it comes down to inspiration, it, as I said, just go look up five seconds on YouTube and you can find some of the dumbest lawsuits that have happened just for small things in music. So I, as I said, I would love to see how this works. That means they had direct access to Mimic Lock and were creating a song on top of it using, you know, new inspiration. Uh, but clearly with this much similarity, you're not gonna have a fun time arguing that this was just inspiration. Uh, if you were brought to court. Wow. Um, I don't know if they would be found. It really know. just I depends. I mean, this is just a 30 second section of a two plus minute song, but uh, you're not going to have fun arguing that. I think it can very clearly be shown that this track uh, was directly inspired. And yeah, I just definitely. thought I'd share that. It definitely does. So shout out to T Jam 3 for actually bringing this up and bringing it to light because it's actually kind of crazy that a situation like this even happens. I wonder if the artist is even going to do anything. I wouldn't want to go against Nintendo, to be honest with you. But people have gone after like things crazier than this in the music industry. It's just something that happens. Like it happens all the time. I would tell you again, just go look it up for yourselves. But enough time has passed, and they're comparing Octo Expansion and Side Order, and saying that Side Order is greater than Octo Expansion. Now, do you agree with this? Some of you may, some of you may not. Some of you may realize that Side Order was really a great experience, and I have to say, I absolutely love Side Order. I've talked about it, I talked about it in my last video about how much I really love and respect what the devs have done here, but one of the things that I have to say is the significance of Side Order and the significance of the Octo expansion, it's kind of not the same at all. Like Octo expansion, we got Octoling. Like that was like one of the biggest things, especially for the series. It was like everything was coming together just because of that one moment. Now side order while we got to have like, you know, Pearl Marina, got to get just a little bit more information about just basically Pearl and on top of that Marina's background. So it was definitely a great experience. I, I loved each of them, but I have to admit side order's gameplay got me. I have to say, like, it's definitely one of the most fun I've had with Splatoon as a series. And I just have to say that they need to do more things like this. This needs more updates. We need them to just do more to it. Now, if it happens years down the line, that's perfectly fine. But I hope that they do not forget this element. And to me, it's 1A, 1B. Just pick whichever one you feel like. I, I think this is just a good example of good single player Splatoon games. And I think that that's always a great thing. Now, there were people that were complaining about how short it was, but Arashi did say, people who are saying side order is short do not understand roguelites. And I have to agree. I, it's, a, it's just people being unfamiliar of the genre, but hey, it's not a big deal because I have to admit that it's something that I've been absolutely enjoying playing and I beat it like all the way through every single palette loved it all the way through i i even did a hackless run like the, it was it is an amazing experience but nintendo has some issues going on and it's actually very funny because even just like talking about the direct that just passed and all the games that are there it's a partner showcase that's really it it's a partner showcase so if you're upset about that there's no point at all but outside of that somebody actually gave all the information for it and i saw a lot of the tweets even about this from before and Pyoro, like literally, as Game Cage says, like history books, like we'll talk about this leaker genuinely. There's just so many things that they themselves have just put out and confirmed. And I just watched it in real time because I had to. And it's just actually insane that they are the ones that to talk about what's been going on. And they are the only ones on Twitter that know. A lot of people like to speculate. They like to say any time of the year. No, this is this is like down to the, like the letter has to be some like ex like nintendo fan or like ex nintendo like employee or something like that that just 
goes in to try to figure out how they can figure this out or is just some random person that's just like i figured out how to do this so along with a lot of nintendo struggles and what's been going on while they're having an amazing year by the way but right now it's very interesting that these things have been happening back to back to back but funny enough somebody posted the fact that luigi's mansion 2 hd is going to be a 60 dollars game now a lot of people were very upset about this because they're like why is a 3ds game going to become a $60 game. Now, this is from Sammy that says, in disbelief, Nintendo is charging $60 for a 3DS game on Switch that you can still get for $30 on Amazon. They have a history of doing this, but double for a 10 year old game that wasn't even that good, laughable. That's actually hilarious that they even said that, but I do have to like add a counterpoint to that. Didn't they say they're adding like a little bit more to this game? Isn't there going to be like more things that are gonna be added to it? I don't know. Like I. I just for me personally, especially if they're going to be like basically trying to change things around, maybe I don't, I don't know if it comes down to the story. Obviously, I'm not saying that, but I feel like they did say that. And somebody else brought up by the name Shokyo actually said people really trying to justify a $50 up res 3DS is mind boggling, especially considering Metroid Prime Remastered, the best remaster port Nintendo has ever done of one of the best games of all time. That is also the best looking game on their current system was just $40. Now, one thing that I, I'm gonna have to be honest here and say, one is dealing with Metroid and the other is dealing with, you know, Mario. Sorry to say it, Luigi's Mansion. I, they're gonna do whatever they can for any Mario game to keep those prices high. I'm sorry to say it, there's a Mario tax. And I don't know when the new console comes out if that Mario tax is gonna be real, like to the point where they charge even more for Mario games. But I'm sorry to say it, we we just have to live in this world where they go in for Mario games. And that's really it. There's nothing else that you could do about this. So sadly, I don't know what to tell you. I don't think it's that big of a deal outside of it. Like, it's just great to have on your Switch at the end of the day. And if it's really that accessible for like, you know, your 3DS, don't get it. Like, I, I, I don't know, maybe it's just me at that point. I don't know, maybe if I'm not like seeing the, like the, the urge to be mad about this one, Yes, I do I think games should be this expensive? No, I do not at all. But I don't know, maybe it's just me. What do you guys think? So an interesting topic has hit Twitter and sadly, this topic has to deal. I'm just gonna show you the clip. Yes, a real job can be gruesome. A real job can make you very tired, but a real job doesn't suck the soul out of you. You know what I mean? In the same way that nine hours of streaming absolutely will. Yes, in this, they're talking about what is a real job. And a lot of times it comes up with content creation, making money with video games. At the end of the day, a job is a job. And funny enough, they tried to defend themselves and say, it is wild how this completely out of context clip made its way to Twitter so fast. I was talking about how much a nine hour stream eats away at my social battery and how I can't socialize after comparing it to my sales job before. I recognize how fortunate I am every day. Now, the, the hard part about this, when people make millions and sadly, when you sit at a desk and just look at a camera and talk, a lot of people look at that and judge it. Now, you could say the same thing for, you know, people that go to a nine to five and it's not dealing with anything like, you know, essential. Now, you always get the construction workers that will come out and say, I'm outside until 6 a.m. And yes, we all understand that. But it's a bigger conversation of grind culture and to be honest, capitalism. The fact of the matter that we started to do content creation as a way to make money instead of it just being hobbies. Now, that's a weird way of thinking about it and there's not much we can do to change that. But one of the things that I, I would like a lot of people to actually understand, it's mainly grind culture. A lot of us do social media along with our jobs and are working harder than we ever are, have ever before. That's actually the crazy part about it. For some of us, I'm gonna be honest with you guys, me, I work a nine to five. And then on top of that, I do content creation. So those of you that are asking, how do I sleep? I don't know, but I do this because I like it. And that's really it. And at the end of the day, I will never belittle anybody for any type of job or whatever they do. And I think that that's a great part about being human, that we have all these different options. Now, I wish they were more available and we all had easy ways of just working. That would be great. And hopefully we're working towards that. But I would like people to understand that, yes, grind culture is a very, very bad aspect of our society. And even for me, I've done the nine hour streams and I'll, I'll be honest. Yes, it drains your social battery and being at an office all day drains your social battery just the same.
So it's not a competition. I think we just need to all realize, hey, we all work. Everybody's trying to get along. Everybody's trying to make it through their days and times are hard. That's all it really is. So side order seems to be having an effect on the game after everything that's been going on. And a lot of people have been saying that the game looks different after looking at side order, but does it look this different? So Mars posted, why is everybody glowing? The entire match was like 10 times saturation. Now I have to say that I've never seen anything like this and I'm gonna be honest, that would probably hurt my eyes if I saw that in game. But I wonder why this happened, why that bug even like is a possibility. I wonder if they're doing something maybe in the background or it's just some random thing that happened to their Switch. But hey, catch you guys later. Have an amazing day. Peace out.